return to Earth after your first uh, trip and your experience in space, and after looking back, uh, after looking down from Earth, did you feel that mankind was more fragile or more powerful than you thought before you left? Well, I, I don't think I feel or felt too much difference, but these problems, which uh, I mean, was known of course to me already, uh, and I'm an optimist, so I'm not too concerned. But still, we must not uh, kind of neglect them, and it certainly gets very uh, it's obvious for you to some extent. At least that the, there is a concern here. It looks. Also, I think, hope we can learn to not only take care of our Earth, also learn how we can live on other planets eventually. And that's also a way to take care of ourselves in the long run. If you have movies in the space shuttle? Yeah, how does the arm move? The arm, the robotic arm. Oh, the robotic arm. So, um, yeah, there is. Uh, Operation uh, panel with uh, two uh, kind of one uh, like a joystick, which you can change direction, what, and then another which you push on to move it around. It, it's really the arm is very uh, I call it versatile, high dexterity, I guess. Bending. <laughs> but you have to be very careful so you don't run the arm into something the size of this shuttle or something like that. Um, were you worried on your first space walk? Well, I was definitely excited <laughs> when I was going outside. I wasn't really worried for my safety, that I would uh, maybe die or something. But uh, I didn't want to do something stupid to embarrass myself. <laughs> you know, I had trained for this for hundreds of hours in the pool where we trained this, and it's very expensive things, and uh, you want to do it properly. I think it's a bit like if you've been training for a theater play and you go there on the stage first time and you're a bit excited that everything will be properly done. Mm -hmm. Is eating in space different from eating here? Like we saw a little video of you eating with the beer, the candy. My favourite candy I've ever liked. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Does it uh, taste different? Personally, I didn't notice much change in taste, but there are people who claim that they change a lot to the taste. There have been examples. You have a chance to taste, try everything before, and then you put together your own menu. And there are people who you know, oh, I like this very much, and they order that for every day, and then come up to space, and they change the taste, so they don't like it anymore. So, <laughs> so uh, I thought more that it's kind of boring to have to eat out the plastic bags or cans all the time, and not being able to put it on a plate and have a glass to put the drink in. And it's similar. It is uh, not, not no fresh food, of course. All the food has to be such that it can be preserved for uh, half a year without being in a refrigerator. So that makes it to be restricted. Is there any um, problems or difference when you're digesting food in space in sort of zero gravity? Yeah, um, maybe not the digesting, the digest, digesting itself, but your stomach behaves differently. Uh, you feel it so different, uh, it doesn't fall down the <laughs> same way. So, uh, for example, if you're unlucky, you can need to get the you know, throw up the reflex because it comes up a bit and in the beginning before you get used to it. Also, your uh, intentions to get the stomach working for the toilet, so to say, it can also be difficult in the beginning. <laughs> um, I was watching the documentary before about the difficulties that astronauts have adjusting them. Around the corridor, say, walking around, and if he was going straight and then decided to turn left, his body would turn left, would he keep moving <laughs> that way? Did that happen to you at all? Well, exactly that I didn't, I, at least I don't notice, but you, you, you are definitely off in your sense of balance. Uh, you, know, you walk a 
bit like this it feels. And, uh, walking up the stairs is very heavy uh, for these days. And uh, of course, the longer you've been up, the more the longer these things can stay with you. Uh, I could feel it maybe for three days, but gradually decreasing. And that after, after two weeks in space, people have been up for six months. I mean, I think they clearly can feel it at least for a week, maybe even uh, even longer. Some of that. So you definitely recommend not to drive a car for a while. <laughs> Is the space station showing signs of wear or not? No, uh, not really yet. No, I mean, yes, if you go outside, you do see, for example, the kind of marks from micrometroids and uh, things like that, but not really. Yeah. Not really that it would be a concern, so to say. It doesn't leak, for instance. No, it doesn't leak. That is uh, not more than I guess what's expected. I mean, you would always expect it. Yep, go ahead. Oh, and um, is like climate change going to affect the huge focus of the ISS from now on? Or? Not the, I, I wouldn't call it a huge focus, but we want to offer our uh, contribution to that because ISS offers some. Uh, advantages which you cannot do with uh, the dedicated satellites. There's a lot of dedicated satellites studying various aspects of climate change. But I uh, say ISS, you have people there and then the platform is there so you can, it can be easier and cheaper to put an experiment up there. Lower, which is actually in some cases definitely an advantage. So uh, we will do some of that science from there, but it won't be the majority part. Thanks very much for a lovely lecture. How significant are the lar recent um, large scale deposits of water on, for example, Io, to your continuing research? How significant is that? Sorry, how significant? How significant is the recent discoveries of large water deposits on Io, perhaps subsurface, to continuing research for yourselves? And oh, I mean, they expose yes. things. Well, yeah, I think they're pretty uh, interesting. I mean, significant depends on how you. Uh, what do we think is a significant uh, discovery? I think it's a significant discovery. I mean, this was pretty <coughs> unexpected. That's I can tell you, it uh, ero apparently arose some interesting, completely unexpected area. The, one of the scientists, or one science team in, in down here, they, they published a paper. They got connect, contacted by some cosmetics industry, was wondering if they could kind of do some cooperative work because they were interested in one of these results and all that. But it was, I don't know more than that, but most definitely, it's not often we get comp industry who comes to us to ask for this, but then coming from that area was unusual. So. What was the biggest um, personal challenge for you or any of the astronauts in space that say you weren't prepared for that was um, a personal challenge maybe with the were you bored, or did it find it hard to pass the time, or fatigue, or I don't know, just what was the biggest um, Well, maybe uh, fatigue. Uh, uh, I was never bored. <laughs> and uh, you don't get uh, lonely. You, you, for example, there is a possibility to call home from the space station. So you can, not continuously, but when you have a <laughs> right radio connection, which is maybe half, I think maybe one third of the time and I was there. Uh, but uh, for me, I wanted to do so much, and I wanted to do well, and uh, take also not only work. So I, I realized after a while I got fatigued. And uh, in both flights for the first week, I didn't sleep well. I, it was difficult to fall asleep properly. And, uh, one of the reasons I think is that yeah, I get it takes time to get used to fall asleep and wake up. Mm -hmm. I like stay on my back, and then a few minutes I turn to my side, and then I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. What? Well, Weightlessness, it doesn't matter if you kind of turn around and feed the same. So do you, do you, how do you sleep there? Where do you sleep? Uh, you have a sleeping bag, uh, which you just hook up somewhere. <laughs> and it can get pretty crowded in the shuttle and in the end when you seven people are going to sleep in uh, one big room there. And you know, someone like that and then that, or any direction. <laughs> Uh, you were mentioning that uh, ultraviolet light is more intense in space. Uh, does that mean that you get sunburned like very easily if you're like, yes. in space and you're exposed to yeah. direct sunlight? If you if you uh, 
if you would have that directly, and, and for example, there have been cases that to do some uh, scientific measurements, have been some uh, normally glass window normally blocks the UV light, so it doesn't go through there. So that's the same for most of the windows in the space station and the travel. But there have been some special windows made because you want to have a scientific instrument to <coughs> measure the UV light. And uh, some uh, as something they yeah, are born for that, but if they've been careless and open it and looked out, it would quickly be pretty burned. Uh, because uh, normally the atmosphere <coughs> would stop most of it. And this really uh, high energetic part of it, that uh, we don't have any on Earth. Uh, what was the suit that you'd be wearing when inside the spaceship made of to protect you from how, how it is, or what do you say? Yeah, what, what, what's it made of? Oh, there's a lot of uh, layers. Um, I think it's seven layers or something like that. And then uh, inside you, you also have a couple of different, you have a, your underwear. And on top of that, you have a special cooling unit, cooling suit. Uh, because uh, it's very well isolated, obviously, because it has to <laughs> keep all the air inside. Uh, and then, um, so, the body, the heat you create from your own body uh, will very quickly just overheat uh, you, you. So to cool the body, you have a kind of garment with small uh, tubes in which you run water. Uh, and then that water gets cooled through a, what we call a sublimator, something which sits in the backpack. But this backpack here is a, uh, is a life support system which keeps you right temperature, it gives you the air, it cleans the <coughs> carbon dioxide, which you can you know, save out of the air, and it's a radio, uh, it's just a lot of uh, functions. Um, so, yeah, I don't remember all the materials, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a one-man spaceship, actually. Yeah, and your muscles rise away if you're at the weightless for too long, or Across the space station, you can walk around. Yeah, your, your mu muscles uh, degrade pretty quickly if you don't do anything, and therefore, uh, the people living on the space station they have a pretty strict schedule every day to work out twice actually, and there's specially uh, developed uh, equipment for, for that. And uh, even uh, though I was up only for two weeks, both times, when I came back, and after a couple of days, I got uh, sore in my calf muscles because they were not used at all. Oh, a little bit. They used to be. Also, I was doing. We have a, a training bike uh, on the shuttle, which I used a couple of times. So I was looking up. How much does the temperature of the upper skin vary? No, inside it's uh, no, no problem. They are very comfortable, 20 plus centigrade. So, yeah. The outside get very hot? Yeah, the outside, or the, the surface of the outside, depends on what material it is and how much it's uh, in the sun or been in the shade. But it can go from something like plus 150 centigrade to minus 150 centigrade. So it can really uh, fluctuate widely. One, one last question. Uh, uh, just wondering, is there much of an effect on bones with being spent for a long period of time? Like I've heard that uh, if you have broken a bone or something that you, you couldn't go in for any length of time because it would be brittle or something going back. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely correct that uh, one of the biggest concern is that the bone gets uh, demineralized and, and, and weakened uh, and pretty uh, quickly in certain uh, parts of the lower bones in particular. You can lose up to 1% per month of your bone mass. And uh, yes, so you can, if you break it, it would be much harder, I'm sure, to, to heal it. I don't think it's ever, ever happened that someone bro broke a bone yet in space, but eventually it will happen. And um, this is uh, similar to the uh, Venus osteoporosis, <coughs> which many older people, the elderly ladies, have. 
and it's one of the big research programs uh, on uh, in space to understand this more. Why does it happen, and uh, what countermeasures can we find, and how can we then utilize that on Earth also? Uh, and it's not even clear that you come back, that you regain the full strength of your bone, ever. <laughs> You do get like, some bone mass, but maybe not the full strength. Great, thank you, Christer. Um, I'd like to thank you all for.